You have to ask yourself, how many times are you prepared to try and fail in order to make that happen? Because if you're not prepared to try and fail, you're probably not going to get there. Melanie Perkins is the 36-year-old founder and CEO of the ridiculously successful design tool, Canva. If you wanna design a quick brochure or a social media post, you don't go to your friend who knows Adobe Illustrator or Microsoft Designer, you go to Canva. In 2021, Canva was valued at $40 billion and it has a huge 125 million active monthly users in 190 countries around the world. It's taken over online design. And just like Wix and Squarespace empowered normal people to be website builders, Canva expanded the graphic design market beyond just designers to everyone. But things would look very different right now if a killer business idea hadn't occurred to Perkins back in 2006, when she was just a 19-year-old student in Perth, Australia. On the side, she'd tutor students on how to use design programs like Adobe Illustrator and Microsoft Designer. But the programs were so complicated that it took months for students to even learn the basics. So she wondered, what if you could build an online software that made it easy for anyone to design a newsletter, music poster, or pitch deck? There was a gap in the market, something that would let people just focus on designing the things that they needed and then let them print those designs with just one click. Only one problem, Perkins was just 19 years old with no tech know-how and zero financing. She wasn't ready to take on Adobe and Microsoft. She had to start smaller. So Perkins decided to target Australia's market for high school yearbooks. See, her mother was a school teacher, so she knew firsthand how much of a grind it was every year for school teachers and volunteer students with no design experience to compile a yearbook just using Word or Publisher. And they weren't even online, so you'd have to email files to each other if you wanted to collaborate. Perkins wanted to create a software for designing yearbooks that was millions of miles better than anything else on the market and would prove as a proof of concept for Canva. It'd be online and collaborative like Google Docs, really simple to use, and have beautiful yearbook templates that stressed out teachers could use to just plug and play. Schools would design the yearbooks for free using the software, then pay commissions for print runs from Perkins company, Fusion Books. The business had four key advantages, a big market, concrete problem to solve, recurring demand, and no competitors with good products. Along with her partner and co-founder, Cliff Obrecht, Perkins wrote out 80 pages of detail on how the app would look and work, including every specific button, before getting a $50,000 loan from friends and family. Then they went looking for a software development company in Perth that would actually build their product. After being turned down by half the town, they eventually found a company called InDepth that agreed to do it. Within six months, the first version of their software was done and people loved it. Fusion Books got 16 schools as customers in their first year, and Perkins set up printing presses in her mom's living room to meet the demand. Over the next few years, Fusion grew to become Australia's biggest yearbook publisher, but people kept asking if they could use the software to design other things. There was still a gap in the market for Perkins' Canva idea. That's when she heard that superstar investor Bill Tai would be in town. He was judging a startup competition in Perth, and Perkins managed to talk to him for just a couple of minutes about her idea for taking on Adobe and Microsoft. So she made a plan to fly to Silicon Valley for a one hour lunch with Ty, her only contact in the Bay Area, and the man she needed to convince if Canva was gonna get any VC money. So I spoke to him for five minutes and said, if I went to San Francisco, he'd be happy to meet with me. Perkins turned up for the lunch with a pretty horrific paper pitch deck. Here's one slide from it. And Ty wasn't too impressed. He was very unattentive. He didn't, didn't seem to be interested at all. He was on his phone. And I was <laughs> oh like, my oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. I have completely flopped. Turns out Ty had been putting her in contact with potential investors and collaborators on his phone the whole time, including Lars Rasmussen, the inventor of Google Maps. If Perkins could get Rasmussen to sign off on her tech team, Ty said he would invest. So for the next three months, Perkins crashed on her brother's couch in San Francisco. She attended every conference she possibly could, trying to rustle up more investor interest 
and find the programmer who would actually build Canva. But the rejections kept piling up. Investors would say, your headquarters in Australia, that's too far from the Bay. You don't have a Harvard, Stanford, or MIT background. And Rasmussen, the Google Maps creator, kept rejecting all of the engineers that Perkins found. So no funding from Bill Tai, and tensions were starting to mount back at home. And Fusion Books was a sure thing. The business was doing really well and expanding to new markets beyond Australia. But Perkins' co-founder and partner, Cliff Obrecht, was having to do all of the work while Perkins was putting all of her energy into Canva, the big risky bet. It would have been so easy for Perkins to give up, go back home, and make a really nice living running Fusion Books. But in 2012, she finally got a breakthrough. Bill Tai was obsessed with kite surfing, and he invited Perkins and Obrecht to his kite surfing and startup conference in Maui called Mai Tai. Perkins said yes, even though she'd have to learn to kite surf in record time. After a couple days of the conference, Perkins convinced Tai to allow her to pitch Canva to all the investors in attendance. After he agreed, they stayed up all night practicing their pitch. And after they delivered it, it changed everything. Multiple investors bought in after that pitch and their interest led to even more funding. Oh, and the technical team? Things fell into place there as well. When Perkins brought Cameron Adams on board as technical co-founder and found a talented tech developer named Dave Herndon. By the end of 2013, Canva managed to raise 1.6 million from Angel's Bill Tai, Lars Rasmussen, as well as VC firms Blackbird, Matrix, and Interwest Partners. They also got a grant from the Australian government for 1.4 million, bringing their total seed funding to over $3 million. In August, 2013, after years of work on their V1, Canva finally was ready to launch and growth exploded. 1 million users in 2014, 6 million users in 2015. By 2023, they hit 125 million users. Today, Perkins and her partner Cliff are worth more than $7 billion. And none of this would have happened without four key ingredients. A killer concept that understood what people needed. The vision to build Fusion Books first to prove her thesis. The patience to wait for the right tech talent to come along and build the product. And the courage to fly to Silicon Valley, make the pitch, and follow her dreams. Every single entrepreneur that wants to build a great business can learn from this story. And for an even crazier Silicon Valley story, check out this video about how Sam Altman was the mastermind behind OpenAI and ChatGPT.